Good morning. I am A. Nevisena. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about root locus, that is, the stability analysis in time domain. This topic is present in the subject control system. Let us start solving an example. Sketch the root locus diagram of the following open loop transfer function g of s h of s is equal to k into s plus 4 divided by s into s square plus 8s plus 13. Step 1. First, we have to identify the number of poles and number of zeros from the given problem. In this problem, we have three poles. They are at s is equal to 0, we have one pole and at s is equal to minus 3 plus 2j and minus 3 minus 2j, we have other two poles and the number of zeros z is equal to 1 that is here we have p is equal to 3 and z is equal to 1 now we are going to determining the number of separate root loci as well as we are going to identify the starting point and determining point of the root locus in this given problem we have three poles and one zero the number of poles is greater than the number of zeros therefore the number of separate root local branches is equal to the number of poles p that is equal to three now we are going to identify the starting point and determining point of the root locus the starting point of the root locus branches are from the poles 0 comma minus 3 plus 2j comma minus 3 minus 2j the terminating point of the root locus at zeros here we have one zero so one branch terminate at zero the other poles terminate at infinity now we are going to locate the poles and zeros in the s plane here we have one real pole at s is equal to 0 and two complex poles at s is equal to minus 3 plus 2j and minus 3 minus 2j. The poles are represented as a cross symbol in the s plane and we have one 0 at s is equal to minus 4. The 0 is represented as a circle in the s plane. Now we are going to identify the parts of the root locus. Consider a point P1 from the above diagram. To the right hand side of the point P1, the sum of poles and zeros are odd. That is, we have only one pole to the right hand side of the point P1. So the point P1 is the part of the root locus. It is indicated in the above diagram. Now consider the point P2. To the right hand side of the point P2, the sum of poles and zeros are even. That is, to the right hand side of the point P2, we have one pole and one zero. Its sum is even in number. Therefore, the P2 is not the part of the root locus. Now we are going to determine the angle of asymptotes. Number of asymptotes capital N suffix A is equal to P minus Z. Here we have three poles and one zero. Therefore, P minus Z is equal to three minus one, that is two. The angle of asymptotes can be calculated with the help of the formula theta suffix N is equal to two N plus one into pi divided by P minus Z, where the N value is equal to zero, one, two, and it goes on up to P minus Z minus 1. Here n is equal to capital N suffix A that is P minus Z that is 3 minus 1 that is equal to 2. Therefore, for n is equal to 0 and 1, we have to calculate the angle of asymptotes. Now, we are going to calculate for n is equal to 0. For n is equal to 0, the angle theta suffix 0 is equal to 2 into 0 plus 1 the whole into pi divided by 3 minus 1 that is 90 degree. Now for n is equal to 1 we have 
theta sub x 1 is equal to 2 of 1 plus 1 the whole into pi the whole divided by 3 minus 1 that is 270 degree. Now we are going to determine the centroid value. Centroid is represented by a symbol sigma. The formula for calculating the centroid is sum of real parts of poles minus sum of real parts of zeros divided by p minus z. That is here we have three we have to consider the real parts of the poles and real parts of zero. Therefore 0 minus 3 minus 3. This is the real parts of the poles. We have to consider the sum and we have a 0 minus 4. Therefore, the centroid value is minus 1. The centroid is a point where the angle of asymptotes intersects on the real axis. The centroid may be a part of a root locus or it may not be a part of the root locus. Now we are going to determine the breakaway point value. In this problem, no poles are adjacent to each other. The pole at the origin terminates at S is equal to minus 4, that is at 0. The complex poles move to infinity along 90 degree and 270 degree asymptotes. Hence, there is no valid breakaway point. Generally, the breakaway point is a point where the root locus intersects on the real axis. Here, there is no valid breakaway point. Therefore, the root locus does not intersect on the real axis. Now, we are going to determine the intersection of the root locus with the imaginary axis. For that, we have to consider the characteristic equation 1 plus g of s h of s is equal to 0. That is 1 plus k into s plus 4 divided by s into s square plus 6s plus 13 is equal to 0. If we simplify this equation means we obtain s cube plus 6s square plus 13s plus k into s plus 4 that is equal to 0. If we further simplify means we obtain s cube plus 6 s square plus 13 plus k into s plus 4k that is equal to 0. The coefficients of the given polynomial are a0 is equal to 1, a1 is equal to 6, a2 is equal to 13 plus k and a3 is equal to 4k. With the help of these values, we are going to construct routes array. The route array is represented below. For construction of the route array, we have used the coefficients. For the s cube row, we have used the even coefficients, that is a0, a2. For the representation of s square row, we have used odd coefficients, that is a1 and a3. With the help of this s3 row and s2 row, we have calculated the s1 row. And with the help of S2 row and S1 row, we have calculated S0 row. To have intersection on J omega axis, any one row should be 0. So, make S1 row to be 0. That is, 78 plus 2k divided by 6 is equal to 0. If we simplify, this means the value of k is equal to minus 39. The value of k is negative. But to have intersection on the J omega axis, the value of k should be positive. So, root locus does not intersect on the J omega axis. Now, we are going to calculate the angle of departure because in this problem, we have a complex poles. Angle of departure for complex poles are calculated as follows. Now consider a point P2. From that point P2, we have to calculate the angle of departure. Angle of departure phi suffix d is equal to 180 degree minus sum of phi suffix p plus sum of phi suffix z. That is 180 degree minus minus of phi suffix p1 minus phi suffix p3 plus phi suffix z1. That is 180 degree minus 
the whole bracket 146 degree plus 90 degree plus 63 degree that is its value is plus 7 degree similarly if we consider the point to be 3 means the angle of departure is minus 7 degree angle of departure representation for this problem here we have one real pole at s is equal to 0 and two complex poles at s is equal to minus 3 plus 2j and minus 3 minus 2j and we have one real 0 that is s is equal to minus 4. Now we are going to calculate the angle of departure. For calculating the angle of departure we have considered a point P2 and from that point P2 we have to make an angle from the other poles and zeros. This is indicated in this diagram. The complete root locus diagram is represented here. The centroid for this diagram is minus 1. The angle of asymptotes are 90 degree and 270 degree. It is represented here.